we're back, moving into our final segment of Open Your Eyes as we shift gears to focus on a very big celebration coming out of Belize Audubon Society. 50 years. Yes. Congratulations. We Thank you. <laughs> we have with us to tell us more, Amanda Burgos Acosta, who is the Executive Director of Belize Audubon Society, and Carly Chanona, Membership Service Manager, uh, also for Audubon Society. Good morning, ladies, and welcome. Morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks. And congratulations on the 50th anniversary. Yes, it's Thank a big you. birthday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, with every birthday, you have to have your reflection. Uh, 50 is a big year. Lots of people yes. who big mm -hmm. celebrations. So I'm expecting big celebrations yes. from you guys. There's a lot of events actually. <laughs> so we're we're gonna be here a few times, hopefully, and hopefully the Belizean. Um, audience won't get too tired of us. We'll try to spice it up and change faces on them. Yeah. <laughs> but the idea is that we have a lot happening. Yeah. And really a lot of it is to get, engage people, for them to get involved, to get out, mm -hmm. to really start looking into environment and promoting that civic pride, that pride of Belize, really. So, yeah. so looking back to the beginning of Belize Audubon Society, it's always important to understand when we talk about Belize, everyone is always so proud how we herald ourselves as a, you know, an ecotourism uh, destination, that there's so much greenery, that we have all these protected areas. And so if we look at just the fact that Belize Audubon Society has been around for 50 years, longer than the country's been independent, yes. Yes. it shows that there was this consciousness a long time ago. So let's talk about the beginnings. So the beginnings of Belize Audubon actually was nature lovers. It was a group of people who got out and was birding and was sightseeing. And actually, um, the original founding members of Belize Audubon were some of the first people who started to note, like, oh, Cookie Tree has fantastic bird life. It has lots of migrants. And they started to notice Half Moon Key. And um, they really started to get out there and see what Belize had and what Belize needed to protect and mm -hmm. preserve. Um, over the decades, we've been involved in promotions of different legislations and acts. Um, we've been involved in really just getting the whole sector um, being involved. And we have, I mean, you see me here with Oceana many times. We yeah. talk about World Heritage, we talk about banning gillnets. So we do have that voice and we've always had um, that spirit of advocacy when it comes to the environment. Mm -hmm. We're not always the loudest sometimes. I think we have a lot of colleagues now that are, are joining mm -hmm. our voice and I think that's fantastic. But um, our foundation has always been uh, protected areas, protected areas legislation, management, and mm -hmm. their effective running. Yeah, and over the years, one of the th one of your key partners has been the government yes. in your co-management uh, areas, right? Right, so we actually don't own any of these lands, and I always tell people that these are for the Belizean people. We are, we are guardians, we are the people who are in the forefront, we yeah. get it staffed, we get it up and running, but it is a service that we provide for the Belizean. Mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So looking at the, uh, the past 50 years, and I know it's a lot of time um, to be able to reflect on, but what would you say are some of the major milestones? I think what, we can, uh, what I had thought of is that we can do it kind of sector by sector. I think yeah. okay. when it comes to the protected areas, I think the, the evolution we have seen is that they're very well managed. Our protected areas that we work in, mm -hmm. um, there is a management effectiveness tool and we score B's and A's and all of them. So oh. I think that shows that we've put the work in to managing these sites. Um, from a staffing point of view, we employ it about almost 50 people. Yeah. So we've grown from a voluntary <coughs> group to now having formal um, staffing and sites and trained people. I mean, we have yeah. scientists on our, we have from all the entire spectrum of people mm -hmm. from rangers to double masters and GIS and yeah. all of that. So we do have the people, the technical capacity to do that. And I think one of the things that we've carried through is membership. And I think one of the things that we're trying to promote this year is that people can be a part of the society. People can be a part of Belize Audubon and part of the stewards and the management. Yeah. I think one of the things we, we kind of struggle with sometimes is telling you this is a feel-good institution. Yeah. We come in and we tell you we're having a little visit to Half Moon Key. Mm -hmm. It's a nominal. We don't make money off of them. Yeah. So we're, we're taking you out there. We're trying to get people out to see 
we're trying to educate you on the issues. We do our newsletters. So we educate you on what is happening in, mm -hmm. in the sector. Our Facebook is very active, so we can tell you. Um, so for instance, last week we had the signing of the World Heritage Commission mm -hmm. officially. And so we, we are part of that now as yeah. part of the advisory assigned um, under the Deputy Prime Minister. So we are parts of this group and it's really getting out there and supporting, adding your voice to ours. Yeah. And there are volunteer opportunities. Um, you can come in and we've had volunteers who are like, we just want to go to Half Moon and we're like, let us think how we can work that out. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a very popular request, but mm -hmm. it, it's a matter of figuring how things can work out. We do have students who come in and volunteer yeah. with us and we get all of that up and running. So I think part of our 50 year reflection is that we are here still yep. mm -hmm. and that we are working still in our field. I think we have proven ourselves that we are good at what we do yeah. um, and we have room to do more advocacy, more work, more promotion of the environment and, yeah. and other agendas that we can pick up. So what has been the plan to continue growing the membership of the Audubon Society? Uh, well, this year specifically for our 50th anniversary, we want to kind of amp up some of our regular activities, mm -hmm. you know, some um, like our conservation award coming up in uh, February actually. Mm -hmm. um, we have our Half Moon Key Trips, which is probably our most popular membership event. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, just kind of getting our word out to the people and, you know, having them be a part of something bigger, mm -hmm. you know, um, and having them go out to the parks, which is one of the largest, I think, membership activity opportunities. You can yeah. get free, free park entrance. entrances. <laughs> um, and that's really something that we want to promote so that more Belizeans can come out and yeah. explore their own resources because like we said it's on behalf of Belizean people that we're doing this we actually have an Instagram that we wanted to launch today yes um, so we're having an you don't have an Instagram yet with all these no, 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 we have promoting we're oh. promoting we're launching a competition oh yes. um, actually we're putting up on our Instagram today and our Facebook yes. it's a getting out to the protected areas mm -hmm. yes. it is a competition well, like well it's a <laughs> explore enjoy conserve mm -hmm. competition okay. so um, it's to create a short video of you exploring, enjoying, and adventuring out of one of the bass parks. Mm -hmm. um, create a short video of you doing that. It can be you. It so can it can be, be family, you birding at friends, Crooked Tree, snorkeling at Half hiking, Moon, hiking at Coxcomb, swimming in the waterfall, tubing at Coxcomb, tubing at St. Herman's, mm -hmm. going into the yeah. cave in St. Herman's. So I'm listing swimming in yeah. Blue Hole yeah. in either the terrestrial or the marine. So mm -hmm. any of these adventures that yeah. you can have, we really want people to capture in short one and a half minutes. Yeah, the max is a minute and a half, but of oh. course you can capture all of that in 30 oh. seconds if you'd like. Um, Walking to the boobies yeah. know, from the birding so deck. So it's, it's an invitation to everyone to come out and explore. And then uh, mm -hmm. we have some prizes. We have first and second prize, which is cash mm -hmm. prizes, um, $750. And that, you know, you can use that for a new GoPro. You can use that to go to Half Moon Key overnight. You know, you never know where that can lead you. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully that inspires more people to come out to the parks and, you know, on their stand. And hopefully that leads to membership as well. Mm -hmm. What's, what's the current demographic of your membership? How um, big is it and who's really... We have a little under 300 active members. Okay. Um, majority of those are Belizeans, and a lot of them are actually based in <coughs> this district. Mm -hmm. um, the second, I would say, is in Placencia, close to Co Coxcomb. Mm -hmm. um, but really, it's trying. we're trying to branch out and include more people and aim yeah. for at least 500 this year. So. Mm -hmm. We're going to say that out low so that we can <laughs> keep ourselves accountable and aim big. So what's the benefit of being a member? Uh, like we mentioned, free park entrances is mm -hmm. one. Um, you also get a discount at the gift shop. Mm -hmm. And we have a gift shop at both the main office in Belize City and at each of the seven protected areas. Um, and just having that constant interaction with our members. Yeah. We have trips, we have events, we have activities. Uh, we have our e-newsletter and we have our printed biannually newsletter. So it's having that um, connection with our members as well and having them come out and enjoy our parks too. Yeah. So. Now, one of the things that we've seen more and more with uh, environmental agencies in the country is just how you rally public support. And that's why I was asking about membership. I'm sure it's very helpful to have 
a, 300 is a lot. Yeah. Uh, 300 members to tap into when you need public support. One of the issues right now is currently seeking the ban on gill nets, right. yes. which now there is opposition from some of the fishermen groups saying, <coughs> not so fast, we don't want this. So how important is it that you get the public to come out to back up whatever initiative, whether it's a ban on uh, offshore oil drilling or gill nets, um, to say that they equally want to see what you're advocating for? It's funny, we were just having this conversation that we, we are, I think, a soft introduction into getting yourself to become an active voice. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us, and I taught for many years at the university level, um, a lot of us are, are, have a sense of apathy. Things are the way they are and we're just going to let it happen. Mm -hmm. I can't change anything. I can't fix anything. I'll just sit here. And I think we have been really... Um, from when we started with offshore oil mm -hmm. and we started to really advocate and we started to get people and we wanted voices We wanted people to come out and to really start voicing their opinion thinking critically um, I think the newsletter is part of what it is is that we're trying to get articles We try to get people who can tell you we always have a guest writer who will tell you a story or a highlight um, we've done it for world heritage we've done it for the impacts of tourism into protected areas so the idea here is it's a way of people to start finding their voice starting to become vocal mm -hmm. because i think if we truly want change we have to start somewhere and and we have to find our voice and that gives us confidence right if we have mm -hmm. success i was part i was out there when when you know the coalition for sustainable fishing called me and I was out there and I really saw that, um, you know, gill nets are not something that is sustainable for our resources. And I, and I understood why I had a presentation mm -hmm. and I educated myself and I start to feel empowered and I start to feel like I am part of something bigger societally. Then you can jump into the ring because there was a comment from your guests before that that um, his children should be the one making the decisions. Yeah. There are <coughs> very few people in that millennial generation who are interested in politics. And it's partly because of how they see it running, partly mm -hmm. how they see it working. And the, the degree of apathy that I can't change. I, one, one me can make a difference. Yeah. And what we're trying to say in the environmental sector, and we've seen the success, right? When yeah. we had the people's referendum, yeah. when we've had um, those calls and people really do come out and they champion and yes there are maybe faces in the forefront um, such as in Oceana and Audubon and WWF you'll see certain faces but that that can't happen without the backing of the bigger populace and I think being a part of this is 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 part of that being a member and saying yes I'm a member of Audubon or I'm a wave maker or yeah. I am part you know it, it gives you that sense of, of identity and and, and ownership yeah mm -hmm. ownership right that we believe in something that you're being a, one of the stewards right yeah yeah right. but looking at your anniversary you know uh, anniversaries are interesting because you do the retrospective but you also do the looking forward let's mm -hmm. let's look forward um when you talk about the nature lovers who first started to recognize there was something to protect to what you are today uh, as a very prominent environmental agency and an advocate mm -hmm. um, for our natural resources where do you see yourself going from here bigger and better in what way <laughs> i do think um there is room for for a lot more to happen i think we um, as a society, as Belize Audubon Society, we can definitely continue to grow. Our education, I'll just give you some small snippets. Yeah. I looked at the past 10 years, because I looked at my, my time, right, when I have been there. And for instance, we now have in seven of our buffer communities, so these are communities around the protected areas, mm -hmm. yeah. we have kids clubs. We actually have seven kids clubs that are now stable. We meet every every month or every quarter depending on what the teacher prefers mm -hmm. and we have grown so our outreach now if you consider seven and we deal with standard two standard three kids mm -hmm. so and it's classes of 27 to 35 so you're, you're getting a multiplier effect yeah. right so we're getting out there 
we have the potential to grow even more. And it's one of those things that I find our teachers, we have two Belize City schools that we are now interacting with, mm -hmm. um, Queen Square and St. Mary's, where we get out there and we talk to the kids. Mm -hmm. So I think in our education program, as we grow and we have the potential to do more, um, our kids camp, I think we, last year we had 500 kids go through our, our we again went into our buffer communities because there's a lot of camps in the kit in the city so yeah. we went out to the districts and we were able to really reach a lot of kids our trips yeah. Carly can tell you our half moon key yeah, trip so went that. from one boat with mm. 40 people to now we have we have we take out 300 every Whoa. July Wow. So um, I think it's one of the most uh, sought after yes, trips that yes. you guys So yes. actually one of the events that we're introducing this year is um, Picnic Star Terrestrial Park. So that's going to be a Sunday event. Uh -huh. um, Half Moon Key is of course a more popular yeah. uh, trip, but we want mm -hmm. more people to get out and we want to take them, yeah. you know. So that's something that we want to add in. Get as out well. to Coxcomb. I don't think people know how many things you can do in yes. Coxcomb. I mean, we or have two the, the, the other blue holes. The other blue hole. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who won Sight of the War uh, Year last year? Really? From BTV. Yes, oh, wow. from BTV, yes. Sight of the Year. So the thing is, there's so much to do. I think the little clips they're showing you are some old yeah. footage mm -hmm. of, of B roll of the sites and what you can do, really. Um, and I think. The idea of the video, when we came up with the video competition, we're like, people get out there. We know they do. Yeah. We see the visitation numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's another part. We do contribute to the tourism sector and, and it's part of part and parcel of who we are. We mm -hmm. want we want other people to come in and see. We're very proud of what Belize has and we yes. want people to see and experience what we have. So I'm glad you mentioned that because tourism is booming in the country right now. And a lot of it had to, has to do with going to some of the very protected areas. Yes. Uh, many of which you, which you manage. Um, when you look forward, given what we've seen just in the past five years, there will be a continuous challenge mm -hmm. in how to balance development and conservation. Right. Um, some environmental agencies have already started their own programs. The ASHA, for example, they have their own uh, mechanism that they do to balance out uh, do you see any shifts from the Audubon Society in perhaps being able to allow for development mm -hmm. since tourism keeps on growing and there's an interest, um, but still ensuring that the resources are protected, sufficiently protected? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the short answer is yes. Um, there's a couple of things. So a few years ago, we were, we were talking about bird tourism and we were mm -hmm. talking about the growth and the huge potential for bird tourism. Yeah. And so we have been working... Um, to to help that sector develop. So mm -hmm. in Crooked Tree, we've done some work and, mm -hmm. and the hoteliers there have really moved with it and gone forward. Um, at St. Herman's, we have um, five local tour operators, so I mean from Armenia and St. Margaret's, who actually um, utilize a casita that is there on us. They have their own cycle that has been worked out and they get the walk-in business that comes in. So it's a community-based kind of structure. Mm -hmm. In Coxcomb, we actually, through the funding of PAC, we have created a tourism master plan. So it's mm -hmm. to help guide um, these processes. And we've just in December got approval from PAC for a large investment. And some of what we're doing in there is carrying capacity or limits of acceptable change studies, mm -hmm. because what we do have to do is balance it. So yeah. the sites that we're at are, are some of the more iconic, popular yeah. sites. You know, yeah. you hear about the Jaguar Reserve and You've heard about Blue Hole. So we, um, we haven't necessarily had to market. What we've mm -hmm. been doing is trying to really maintain. Um, we've done massive infrastructural improvements at all of these sites just mm -hmm. to make sure that the services there and the infrastructure can meet the needs of the people, the guests that mm -hmm. are coming and they're up to a certain standard. Um, what we also, like I said, is that we have to balance it now with the science because mm -hmm. we've, we've, we've had... Um, We've always told people, oh, when you go to St. Herman's, we have this animal and that animal, but now we have camera traps. And I can tell you, <laughs> there is a healthy population of jaguars to the point where my staff's like, they're a little too close to the center, <laughs> to our buildings yeah. when you put the camera traps. Mm -hmm. But we do have the data that it is a viable, healthy population, but mm -hmm. we want to maintain that. And that means balancing the people yeah. and the environment, which is our tagline and has always been. Yeah. But that's really what we move and we work towards. 
Yeah. No, I mean, we've, we've seen across the globe where some of the most popular sites have had to close down because of the impact of the amount of traffic. Most recently right. in Thailand, I believe, um, we've seen in Australia where they're banning sunscreen because yes. of the impact of all the people who go right. um, yeah. snorkeling near the reef. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, what progress brings problems, and that's the, the cliche. Yeah. Um, but I'm just wondering what you do to mitigate knowing that everywhere else, the more traffic you have, the more uh, unforeseen circumstances and I, may I'll arise. I'll give you a, a small point. Or, um, we have a fellow colleague from down south who called and she's like, how do you deal with your trash issue? I'm like, from my staff? And she's like, no, from the side. I'm like, no, trash in, trash out. I don't even put trash cans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. St. Herman has about 25,000 guests to it per annum. Mm -hmm. We do not put out trash cans because I don't want the trash. Mm -hmm. So we tell the tour operators from the very beginning, and, and I'm using it as a small yeah. example, yeah. but it is how you have to start mitigating. Yeah. Um, when it comes to Blue Hole Half Moon, I think the distance is a natural kind of, the, the visitation there has been stable for about five years. It's mm -hmm. between 10 to 12,000 visitors per annum, which is still a lot. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the idea here is, is that they, they really, I think the, the problem there is the sea, like this week, we wouldn't, we wouldn't go out there. I, I, I think the it's seas were horrible, yeah. it's too choppy. So we, the nature is finding its own equilibrium for us. But <laughs> the reality is, is that we do have to take measures and we have to, we have to consciously look at how we manage people and where mm -hmm. we're putting them. Um, when you go to Coxcomb, the big sign that has the trails, we tell you strenuous, easy and moderate hikes because mm -hmm. we make it very clear from the beginning that what level of activity are you kind of again it's part of your mitigation part of your controls yeah. of how you do it victoria peak is going to open in march and of february and dry february. season well that one whenever varies dry, yes when whenever it's dry because we have to monitor it for for guest safety but that one we do um we've had training we had all the tour guides who go through that we've done training they all know how to balloon and tie their ropes and we're having a refresher in another week or two so we have gone through measures and we are actively trying to to mitigate mm -hmm. um, from a safety point of view and from an environmental risk point of view yeah mm -hmm. yeah all right so let's go back to how we're celebrating yes. this anniversary right this is the first appearance but you're going to be having so throughout right so we're here we're gonna have we have a uh, um people can go to our facebook and instagram and check out our yes. flyer for our video competition yes. it has mm. cash prizes first place is 750 second place is 500 so they're attractive cash prizes mm -hmm. um it's simple criteria basically a minute and a half of you out there exploring it can be shorter yeah. but the idea is is people exploring it's part of our one site or multiple sites how you can many? choose however okay. you'd like. If you want to do a compendium and you put mm. all of three of them together, yes. that's perfect for us. Yeah. Um, so we have that. The, we will up. announce the winner Earth Day, so mm -hmm. April. So there's mm -hmm. enough time to get out there because I know weekends is when people get out there. Yeah. Um, we have right now in the newspaper on Facebook, you might have seen, we have our call for nominees mm -hmm. for the James A. Waite. Conservation, conservation Award. Mm -hmm. So the James A. Wake Conservation Award has been issued 32 times already. Yes. Wow. So, so um, what's the criteria? So you have to be a Belizean or Belizean mm -hmm. resident yeah. um, and then you have to just be actively involved in conservation. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of broad enough that it's not site specific or species specific or mm -hmm. or um, even land or, or yes what? Um, yeah. once it's social aspect of it environmental mm -hmm. aspect of it something sustainably um, advocating for I think we have it up on the mm -hmm. screen um, mm -hmm. which is also on our Facebook page also mm -hmm. um, you know that's kind of the broad of it yeah um, but of course once you send in your nomination uh, we ask for just a paragraph just explaining how they're involved in conservation how they meet the criteria, how they meet the criteria mm -hmm. um, and that closes this February 1st at 5 p.m. Oh. So, you so know, this is, it, this is the last That's bit the of it. That's the last bit. So if um, you had so an idea, you thing. had a nominee in mind, you can, you have a, you have a week left. So yeah. not even a week because it's a you Friday. Days, you yeah. have a couple <laughs> days to get it in. Uh -huh. And then on February 16th, we have our award ceremony. How competitive um, is it? Um, we normally have at least three. Sometimes okay. we have up to seven. It depends on the year. It depends um, on, yeah. 
So each year, the James A. Waite Award is held on February 16th because mm -hmm. that's Mr. James A. Waite's birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and this is presented in his honor as the first president of BAS. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that we have in our membership calendar. That's a very strict event as yeah. well. Um, but mm -hmm. of course, like we said, every year is different because, you know, the nominee will be different. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we have uh, February um, 13th, I think. We'll, yes, we'll 13th. Be, we'll be giving a media sneak peek. We're working with the Museum mm -hmm. of Belize on a new display mm -hmm. um, in the mm -hmm. old prison uh, mm -hmm. museum. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have a little ceremony and we'll look at it. We're looking at a... It's a. It's not permanent. It was, they call semi-permanent. It's yes. a few years. Mm -hmm. um, looking at a bird display. Yes. Ooh. So it's going to but be a bird taxidermy display. It's actually a taxidermy. Mm -hmm. So. So there is a local. More gentleman. details to come. Yes. When we launch. <laughs> that one we want you to physically see it though because yeah. it's such a different experience in Belize. So it's not just pictures of birds. No, no, no. It's actually, it's actually taxidermy. taxidermy, and it's they're set on displays, and it's it's an entire little room. Well, you know it's the old, jail, old jail cells, so mm -hmm. it's an entire little cell. It's about 28 <laughs> birds, 27 birds. Yes. So that's the new agenda of Audubon, imprisoning birds? No! <laughs> <laughs> Please don't make that get caught. These birds, no, yes. these were actually, the, the gentleman who does it has a, um, a permit from the Forest Department yeah. and mm -hmm. from Baja, and it's all, they are naturally, yeah. he finds them, or, mm -hmm. or they're actually given to him. They're not hunted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yes. just of natural, natural causes. causes. Mm -hmm. um, and these are going to be used for educational pur purposes, right. of course. Um, right, so yeah. it's all for education purpose. And then we have World Wetlands Day actually this Friday mm. um, Saturday. and Saturday. Mm -hmm. So on Saturday, we're having a ceremony with the village of Cookie Tree and the, the minister, figured. and we're going to mm -hmm. work all of that out. Uh, we have a little ceremony on Friday. Saturday, so it's a formal. But on Friday, mm -hmm. we're having um, the kids do some murals on the front of their school. Crooked Tree will be the focus point, their um, government school, the primary school, and we'll do a cleanup that day. And there's a little art competition on the site. We're working along with the forest department on that one. As you mm -hmm. know, we signed an MOU where we now work with the village council, the forest department, fisheries, and Belize Audubon. So we're doing it in conjunction. All the activities on Friday and Saturday are in conjunction with the Forest Department. Yeah. And so it's really to highlight Crooked Tree. And um, mm -hmm. Saturday, we're gonna go over the management plan. There has been a consultant in the village for the, pa for the past few months preparing mm -hmm. a management plan and looking at the sustainable, they're gonna now move on to um, sustainable use of the resources within the village mm. slash wetland conservation area. So there has been a lot of work um, gone into that and we're gonna have the ministry um, through the forest department highlight mm -hmm. kind of where, where the progress has been made on Saturday. So that should be really interesting and exciting to see how we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we were a part of, we were not the lead, I want to make that clear, we were a part of as stakeholders as well, but it's, um, we all have a part, right? That's the idea of a stakeholder. We all have a part in it, and yeah. Audubon does have a role. We have a long history in Crooked Tree, yeah. but fully understanding that um, shifts and changes are natural and, and yeah. relationships evolve, yeah. and so we're yeah. very much um, interested in, in having a relationship, but in a new, evolved, version so yeah. we've worked with the village council and the consultant and what about incentives for becoming members uh in this uh, 50th yes. anniversary yes. What's, what's, there's a cost associated with the membership yes. right so yeah. the minimum to join as an individual adult is mm -hmm. 20 dollars for the year okay um but that's only kind of the introductory rate you can go yeah. all as the limited way up. access yes yeah. um but we also have a, a child membership um and then we have a family membership and then from there you can kind of Mm -hmm. Family mm -hmm. membership. I, I do want to also remind people that part of Audubon is that our structures, we're very old structures. <laughs> part of our structure is that you can be as involved as you want or mm -hmm. as you don't want. So mm -hmm. you can go all the way to being a, mem a member of the board. Yeah. We, our board is created from our members. So you mm -hmm. have to be a member in good standing for a year. Mm -hmm. And then that following year, you can actually be voted in and you can, or nominated and voted mm -hmm. to be a part of the board, part of mm -hmm. the governing structure. So you can yeah. be very involved if you want, mm -hmm. or you can just say, well, I'm really just interested in my little Christmas gift package and yeah. my newsletters. Or free or, entrance into the or park. Or free yeah. entrances to the mm -hmm. park. And I will tell you that if you live around a park, if you live in Bomo Pan, it's perfect for you to go swimming every Sunday at 
the blue hole inland. When so it's hot. Or Guanacaste. Or Guanacaste even. Or so when it's hot. When when it's it's hot. hot. <laughs> Not now, right? It's but an yes. icebox. When it's yeah. nice and chilly, then you can go down to Coxcomb. You can camp. Yes. You can stay in a cabin. Uh -huh. So that's when it's nice and cozy. Okay. So there's something for everyone. And every time of the year. Right. And then we have our half moon key trips, which is a great pull. And yeah. we also have, um, we did have a little kids camp in Bomopan actually for mm -hmm. under, under six, under yeah. eight. Because mm -hmm. our normal camp is nine and above. So we did a special camp now for under, uh, under nine. So eight and down. Yeah. So we, once a parent, a parent has to be there oh, though. Because that's that. a lot yeah. of energy to yes. manage. <laughs> But it went really well. We, I think we had 10 and 12, we had 10 to 12 kids each time and we ran it for two, three days. Yeah. So how can people stay up to date with the anniversary activities? Um, well, besides becoming a member, which is first access, you get kind of like the Lodong. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also follow us on social media. We have an Instagram page and a Facebook page that we update regularly. Um, Belize our website, Audubon, both of them. Yes, okay. both of them are Belize Audubon Society. Um, and then our, our website is also a good source of information. And you can join us actually if you go to the parks. Our rangers um, have membership brochures. Yes. Okay. You can pay okay. at the site. Um, you can call Carolee yes. at the main office. Or you can stop in and visit me. And stop in and visit her. You can also, um, there's the possibility to pay direct at Atlantic Bank. Yes. Oh, so you can come easy. in and call. She'll send you the information and then you can go make a payment at the yeah. bank itself. Yes. So you don't have to come in physically if yeah. you live mm -hmm. in Dangriga or somewhere else. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, there's a lot of options for payments. So mm -hmm. I don't want that to be a hindrance no, no. to anybody. Because that, that tends to be one of the things. Oh, I couldn't come into the office. Well, you yeah. can do it at the site. Um, so if you if you're looking for something fun to do this year and like I said we'll have a lot of activities our AGM should be really special for those of yeah. the people who are coming yes. and we'll end it with a bang yes. as we should all right well we will look out for all those activities as the year progresses thank you for coming in and best of luck with everything that you have planned thank you thank you <laughs> thank you we're gonna go ahead and take a final break and we'll be back in a few so stay tuned